Uh, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the King's Speech Podcast with Trevor and Josh, the podcast you can relate to, learn from, and laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television now. What's good, Josh? That's a fact. Only on television and on your social media platforms. Yeah, because wow. I mean, this is this is like our, our third restart because I had technical difficulties. So. And, and 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 I think the last joke was really good. Last time, the last joke was really good. Last time, the last one was great. The last one was awesome. um, sparklers, bottle girls. We don't see bottle girls. Um, <laughs> Dude, don't want to. You only have eyes. For don't me. run through the joke. That's it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, um, how you doing? How you doing, Josh? I'm At- good, man. I'm in the middle of the monsoon here in South Florida. Um, a lot of water all around. Actually, today is actually pretty dry, but yesterday was crazy. Like crazy. When it starts raining, uh-huh. it starts flooding immediately. Like, y'all don't have any cool. sewers down there? I don't know what they have here, but they also don't recycle. So I don't know. <laughs> Still figuring it out. Still figuring it out. Still figuring it out in 2020 is hilarious. Still uh, figuring it's- rain in 2020 is hilarious to me. <laughs> Listen, man, it's Florida. It's, it's, it's what well, it used to be Trump County. It still is. It still is. <laughs> it definitely still is. It still is. But we did um, have a good amount of honking and, ho- and horns in celebration like New York was on fire. Tell me about New York this weekend. Oh, man. They were out in the streets, popping bottles, twerking. Hookah was where it was just a celebration. Of- hookah, hookah in the streets? I mean, come on. There's hookah everywhere. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. This hookah everywhere. Uh- Uptown, uptown, uptown is going up. Uh, it- Brooklyn was going up. Yeah. We, we, we had a little, like, a little FOMO. A little se- oh, I, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you guys are down there. There were more people down there that were disappointed with the results than were excited. Up here, it was like a dictator was overthrown. It was like. Yeah, it, was, it really looked like y'all was about to, like, pull down a statue of Trump somewhere and start dancing on the, on the statue. I wish there was one just so we could pull it down. That'd have been lit. That'd have been, that'd have been stupid lit. Super dope. Um, but yeah, like, and we did mention before that the weather here in New York is better than the weather in Fort Lauderdale right now. Also, I mean, it's comparable. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's 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 almost the same. No, it's way better. I didn't have to wear like um, like a wetsuit to get to my car. <laughs> so I think we're doing a, just a like a tad better this weekend. Um. Yo, touche. I was I looked at Kim uh, the other day and I was like, yo, it's been raining a lot, yo. <laughs> like a lot. Huh? What it does down there, it rains. It it does rain. It All- does rain. Mm-hmm. But it like it does this thing where like it it it's dry in five minutes. So it's like what rain? Oh, because really? it like comes up and dries and dries everything away. I don't you know, it's like the rain rain. Go away, kind of thing. rain, rain, go away. Cool, cool. Um, well, I'm glad you're doing well. We are back. How are you, man? I'm good. I can't complain. Like I said before, you know, my skin is glowing. I'm happy. I'm reading. I'm meditating. I'm doing me. It feels good. Absolutely. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that. That's the Instagram uh, caption after a girl breaks up with her man. Yeah, that, I was just trying to. I just. I just wanted to see what you were taking us today. Honestly, I was like, well, okay. You and then talk about it. Like they're on vacation with the girls. They're posting like cryptic stories. Of course. I'm free now. Of course. I, was, I saw somebody like post that, and I looked at my girl, and I was like, I don't want you to ever post that you're free. Yeah, that's that's wild. And in a possessive way, but it's like a lot of times when women break up with somebody, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm free now. Like, I, I'm not going to wear bras. Like, every- Was it that? Like, I just be looking at them like, was it that bad? Uh, it was. For two years? It wasn't. <laughs> For two? Because I, I vaguely remember an entire story on your last vacation of you having the best time of your life. So now it was like, you're free? Yeah, I'm free. Ah, okay. uh, nigga can't see me. Ah, uh, I'm out here. Shimmying, twerking, killing it. New or you could just do everything you're doing without posting it. And then, and then we wouldn't sit here and talk shit about you. Then how would we know that you're doing well after a traumatic event? And that you're not really dealing with your emotions? How would we know that? Wait, hold how, on. How do we even know that that traumatic event even occurred? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got a lot of stuff to get into today, guys. We're going to get 
right to it. We got a new show format that we are rolling out for you. So we're going to start off, of course, we always do current events. Uh, this time we're going to get two stories that stood out to me this week and two stories that stood out to Josh. Um, we're going to start with my two stories. First, of course, the election results. Um, Joe Biden is now president of the United States. Contrary to what Donald Trump believes. Which Yo, is, he is so delusional. Which is wild as fuck. Um, and I put here in the notes, like, what now? So for me, what now follows, as we talked about this like a few months ago, is just like heightened levels of accountability. You know, showing up in the midterms the next time that there's an election, unlike we did after Barack was elected in 2008, we all kind of just like sat back and- and Let Barack do all the work. Barack do all the work and not vote anybody into Congress or the Senate that could actually support a lot of the stuff that he wanted to have passed and the legislation he was working right. on. So I think from what now is definitely the accountability. I'm, I don't want to be a cynic. A lot of people are being cynics uh, about this, about, oh, no, racism is over. Things are perfect. Like, we know racism is not over. We know things aren't perfect. But, yeah. like, we're, it's, 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 a, it's a time to celebrate. Racism is as over as it is when, like, when the ball's about to drop on New Year's and everybody's like, New Year, new me. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, nah, nigga, it's not. Like, it's not a new year and it's not a new you. And it's not, racism's not over. Um, it's, still, it's still present. Um, I'm very happy with the results of the election. Gotta be. Um, super happy. Um, and like you said, I think from here, I think what I would love is like this same, like, you know how they say keep that same energy? Uh -huh. Like, we just need to keep that same energy moving forward so oh, that, in the midterms next presidential election and the years to, and the years to follow and i think i think a lot of people kind of jumped in on like the new wave of how important it is to vote right now and i think that's great but now it's time to like we got what we want let's also educate ourselves right so that next time around we're even more educated and we could have better candidates and like better people and like understand who we're really voting for. I think I, that's like, that's, that's the what now for me. I just want younger people. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> wow. Cause Biden is at, yo, he ran. Joe's great. Did you see him jog out for that speech? I was so worried. I was looking for oxygen. <laughs> I was worried. Cause when you in an age, if you fall down, it's like a big deal. It's not just, Oh shit, I fell and I need to get up. No, I have fallen and I can't get up. I, I cannot. Yo, he's really, really, you know what? We can, it can go two ways right now. We can talk about how old he is or how good he is for his age. Because that's, I think, a little bit more impressive. He's in good shape. He's in, it's crazy because he's in better shape than Trump. And Trump is three years younger than him. Um, yeah. yeah listen, I, listen, he's old, right? Like, I know he's a very sharp, intelligent, experienced guy. But like, I feel like the trend has to change in this country to the people that represent us, right? Like, they need to look more like the yeah. population. And they need to actually be in the middle of more Kamala's. Exactly. And Kamala, I, Kamala, I feel like this is the pathway to Kamala being president. I, and that's what I want. And that's why. Oh, I, it's about, it's literally written. If not now, if not, if not like within the next presidential election or the, or the one after that, in the next four elections, she'll be president. I that, think. Even it has to be sooner than that. Um, and I feel like that was a big, reason why I supported Joe Biden it was his it's really it's really that it's really the and making sure that she had a very you know vocal place in the things that happened because you could see from a lot of his speeches him you know referencing criminal justice and um, systemic racism and all those things that he brought up that she had a huge a huge part to play in that you know that he's listening to her and and working with her and that's that's you know that's what we want we want collaboration um, we want, listen, it looks, this to me is like when the Clippers, right, came out and they gave us their rosters, like Paul George and Trez and this, and we're like, yo, on paper, mm -hmm. they're going to the chip, right? Like Kawhi, Pete, like, you know what I'm saying? Like this to me, great coach, great this, everything lines up, mm -hmm. right? So on paper, everything lines up. We just need results. Yeah, we definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like we have an all-star team. We got to demand results. Yeah. Demand results. And then results. I want to go to like, what do we feel like we can expect from Joe Biden and, uh, and a Kamala, Kamala Harris White House? Um, what I, the biggest thing I'm looking for 
is shit to get back to being boring. Yo, bro, like, yeah, thank you. Thank you for hitting that because I was like, that's where I'm at. It's been too much. Nigga, I just want some peace. I don't even care about y'all like that for real, for real. Don't care. Like, I don't want to hear your kids, like, mouthing off on social media. Enough. Talking about, like, he's like, Trump, like, attacked, like, personal people, attacked the press, um, called people, like, shithole countries, and just all this drama, like, paying Can we? Ours. Is just, just relax. I want everybody just to relax. Yeah, just a big, like, I don't even want to see on my timeline. I don't want to see, like, can we just agree that white people beef is the worst kind of beef? It's nasty. Shit, it's nasty. It's nasty, especially that white people political old man. Ah, just it's it's just nasty, and and it's it gets really personal, and it gets, they, it's just so it's just facts. I just want things to be boring. That's, and they don't even throw hands at the end. So it's like all this talking and you guys aren't even throwing hands. All this talking leads to nothing. Um, nothing. What I am most looking forward to, honestly. I mean, of course, yeah, man. stuff they talked about and promised we want, but we want shit to be boring again. And I don't think there's anything wrong with boring. Ain't shit wrong with boring in the White House. <sighs> yo, after the year we've had, yo, bore me. <laughs> bore me. I am fed up. I'm exhausted. I am tired. And then also, um, lastly on this topic, uh, like how does Joe Biden being president affect our lives? And like I read an article about, you know, different, different things that he promised on his website. You know, of course, I'm always going to be, you know, very, very attentive to the criminal justice reform that he talked about, um, about just like, you know, what, where's the quote? His campaign, campaign, campaign site reads, our criminal justice system cannot be just unless we root out the racial, gender, and income-based disparities in the system. Black mothers and fathers should feel confident that their children are safe walking down the streets of America. And when a police officer pins on that shield and walks out the door, the officer's family should know they'll come home at the end of the day. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with cops being safe. I'm cool with people, citizens being safe. Uh, I just want to make sure that like, the levels of accountability raise. Um, that's, that's the big thing for me. Um, as far as reform, as far as like Joe Biden <clears throat> president. Um, he also like references nonviolent drug offenders. They shouldn't really see too many jail sentences. They should see rehab. They should be, you know, treated for their sickness. Oh, you know, he's heavy on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it hits home for him. And, it hits home. Yeah. and that that's but like, I mean, Joe Biden has empathy at the end of the day. He like does about like the, the crime bill and stuff in the past with black people. But he has an emotion right here. There's an emotion. And you see it. You taps in. It's not anything that you really feel like he's faking. So that's what I'm looking forward to, too. Just like empathy back in the White House. I am, I am very happy for, yeah, that, that's well said. I was, was going to say the same thing you just took it out of my mouth. Um, the White House has a, has a pulse again. Yes. Right. There's, uh, there's people in there who have a pulse that they, um, and they, they care. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? I really do believe that the best structure for a, like a, like a presidential campaign is to have a diverse campaign. Absolutely. I feel like that's the, I feel like that's the, that's the best structure. You, you tap into both sides, um, to both, to majority of both races and everyone feels okay. You know, I'm okay. It's safe. Like I feel safe right now. I mean, a you, little bit. I mean, you should, and you should feel safe when, you know, the, the country that's supposed to like support you and represent you actually like looks like you <laughs> and yeah you and sounds like you yeah. to a certain extent like it sound or like sounds like people your age so uh, listen I, I joe i'm supporting and i'm hoping he does a great job i just need our presidential candidates to not to not be knocking on heaven's door i just need that that's it so how many physicals does he do a year a week a week <laughs> a week i think it's i don't even think it's the physicals it's like what how many pills is he taking a day he he has the he has the Monday through Sunday, <laughs> okay, and that one has the three compartments. Buffet, yeah, yeah. He has he has a little pill. It's enough for him for what he takes. Cause, I, listen, man, we're nothing without our women. That is a fact. Nothing. <laughs> Page parchment by girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So you know, big facts. Like shout out to Kamala. Shout out to Joe. And let's get that he... orange. Bitch ass nigga out the house as quickly as we possibly. Oh, fam, have some class. Get out, cuz. 
Why are you? Why are you? Why are you refusing to leave? Asking him to have class is like squeezing a rock and trying to get lemon juice out of it. Ah, no juice. Exactly what it is. No juice. So uh, do you think that he's moving out the country as promised? Because that's lit. Not. He's gonna stay in the spotlight. He's gonna have a TV show or a podcast or something. That's why I told Kim. I was like, he's gonna stay relevant. He's gonna be a nuisance. And he gets to do that because he has the clout. He's the former president of the United States. Yeah, and everybody's going to, I mean, I feel like certain news channels are gonna, you know, not pay attention to certain act to a certain action, but it's news. If like it's 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 something that we can't escape. Like he's a former president. If something happens, it's news because he's a former president. That's yeah. that's just what it's, it, it is. It is what it is. Default, default press for the rest of our lives. Indeed, it's unfortunate. Thank you, fucking America. <laughs> Thank you. It's still and still and it's still. Seventy million people voted for him. Seventy-one million people still thought that it was a good idea for him to lead this country. Sick. All of you are fucking sick. I wonder what the percentage. Uh, you know what? Let's next topic, please. Because we uh, we'll go for seventy-five days on this shit. Um, the next topic that stood out to me. It has nothing to do with politics, everything to do with Cardi B. Uh, Cardi B is taking back Offset. She said that uh, we reported here, of course, exclusively on the King's Speech podcast, that Cardi B... <laughs> Don't put your hand up and pull it back so quick, nigga, when you say exclusively. On the King's Speech podcast, that, uh, that Cardi B was divorcing Offset, and then we saw her by... We I feel like we were the first to break that news. I feel we were, like we were the first. We were the first, indeed. All right, cool. Saw her receive a, a Bentley truck on her birthday and <laughs> hugged up and kissed up and stuff like that. And then recently she says, I'm taking him back. I just needed to, I just needed him to appreciate me and realize what he had. And to me, that's just more evidence. You know, women are crazy. <laughs> like you, that, how is that a lesson? It's well, the worst you, lesson. It's the worst lesson. Divorce is the lesson. Nothing means anything though. Like the coronavirus uh, rules. Nothing means anything, right? Something. No, it doesn't mean, you think, what does divorce mean to Cardi B and Offset? Divorce, what does that mean to them? I just can't, I don't like games. That's it. I don't like, I don't like being tested. I like everything. And this is very, you know, I guess expectation for guys. Like we all want that. We want things to be like very like black and white. Tell me how you feel. Tell me how you don't feel. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you don't want. And we all know it's never that black and white, which is cool. I've accepted it. 35 years old. What else? What other choice do I have but to accept right. Right. However, like using these tools like divorce as like a game or like a chess piece, I'm not cool with that. Well, here, you know what it is, man? You know me, I go on this soapbox. We live in a world where the um, connection to marriage is desensitized. Like we just don't, there's not an appreciation. There's no, there's no reverence. There's no respect for it. So yeah, I could just fling around the divorce word because I never respected marriage in the first place. Mm. And that's just the society that we live in, right? Like, I don't really understand what it means to say till death do us part. You know what I'm saying? So until I understand that, on, like those vows, that oath, mm. like, yeah, divorce sounds good to me, my nigga. Like, yeah. when can you leave? You know? I mean, divorce isn't always a bad thing. Cause like, I it's like, not, it's not a bad thing, but it's like, when you don't respect it, it's very easy for like, um, to, sh to prove a lesson. Yeah. To Tell throw it around. It's like Offset is a better nigga than me because if you tell me I want a divorce, cool. Where do I sign? Where do you're I not, sign? You're not, you're not, yeah. Talk to you about us. Hey, like, hey, can we work this out? Can we do this? Can we do that? If that doesn't work, where do we sign? I'm not going to let you hold that over my head as a game as, as, as far as like divorce being a game. Two questions. But I do think that means that Cardi's really got the wop. That is evident. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's not going anywhere. She was like divorce. He was like, all right, I'll see you next weekend. He's like, divorce, and your birthday's next weekend. Yeah. I wasn't going to get you another Birkin, but I'll get you a Bentley truck. Truck <laughs> instead, right? Indeed. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, just, I don't think there's anything wrong with divorce. I just think that, like, using that as a, hey, play nice now, nigga card is just really whack to me. Yeah, it's not. But it's my question for you is, is saying I'll sign the papers, is that pride? And is that pride wrong? Because I'm with you <laughs> with whatever you say next. I think in, I think, well, men and women, we both have pride. It's, it's a right. stereotype that men have more pride, but yeah, I got to kind of, I got to kind of debunk that because women also have a bunch of pride and I put on, I'm going to release the results of my, uh, my survey. Cause I put on my Instagram, do women apologize? 
and I had people vote yes or no. So I'm gonna res- I'm gonna you know reveal the results later in the episode of of of, of those um of those polls. Okay. Uh, but women have a lot of pride, and it's women don't apologize a lot. Some do, some don't. I think sometimes you just gotta take the little bit of apology or concession that you get, and understand like it's coming from a place of genuine. They they care about you and they love you, but they got a lot of pride. And for me, I want to I want to clear that up. I want to clear that up with agreements. Okay. That yes, they do have a lot of pride, but I think. They have more pride than they think they do. Yes, absolutely. I think I think, I think that's what it is because they think they're like, oh, like men are so prideful. It's like, nah, like y'all just as prideful. As we, are, we we just show it differently in certain situations, right? Or like, or more prideful. So yeah, it's like if if you don't want to be with me, I'm gonna talk to you and find out if I can fix it. And then if I can't, then what else is there left for me to do? Oh, a little beg action. You got to beg. Come on. I, I mean. You can, you can, I'm not, I'm not telling you beg, but definitely like try to get your voice. If this is something that's valuable to you, honestly, you got to put your pride aside. And that's what I've learned in life. Like if something's valuable to you and you want it and you want it to work, sometimes you just got to put your pride aside and either apologize. I'm not saying beg. When respected, I could put my pride pride aside. Yeah. Right. Like, so like my thing is like, to me, I don't think that dangling divorce over my head is really respecting me. It's not. It's not respect. No, I don't think so. I don't like that. I told you. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. So like, so like, that's what I'm, that's like you said, like, like put your pride aside. I think that I put my pride aside when I'm respected. When I'm like, yo, you know what? I could put my pride aside because this person is going to respect my efforts, this vulnerability I'm about to exude. Yes. Before big, that, you know what I'm saying? Big. Before that, it's like, hold on. You just want to just say you're going to divorce me so I could start tap dancing? <laughs> exactly. No, I feel you. No, you're right. Indeed. Big fact. All right, what stood out to you? Oh, man. Cloud. Well, are you, um, have you been floating around with stocks lately? Uh, I do here and there. Here and there, here. right. I um, feel like a lot, of, a lot of young brothers are floating around with stocks, and I just want to salute all of them trying to make money the right way. I think that's a big deal. Um, so shout out to every young guy out there who's just playing around with stocks. I have not started playing with stocks. Um, Kim is playing with the stocks. But what I wanted to talk about this week is that if you saw when the market opened today, um, the weed stocks jumped up. Yes. And that's because last week, New Jersey, along with 15 other states, are now officially open for recreational use. But New Jersey was added to the other 15 states. But um, voters in Arizona, Montana, New Jersey, and South Dakota cleared cannabis for adult use bringing the total number of states approved for that purpose to 15. So shout out to those states. Shout out to Jersey. That's big for Jersey. Um, Jersey's better than New York right now. That, those, toll, uh, those toll bills, Easy Pass is going to make a killing. <laughs> yo, easy Yo, because you know, listen, this is, I'm going to tell you exactly how niggas are in, in New York are thinking about this right now. Yo, you trying to pay $10 to go across the tolls for some gas? Yes. Every time it's going to be yes. If you say, yo, for some gas, your man is going to say yes. It, it, no, no price of the toll matters. It doesn't. That's, that's, that's the thing. Like, so I'm not a smoker. I've like had an edible here and there in life. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Stories will not be told on this show. Um, when we get paid, I'll tell, I'll tell my edible stories. When we start getting paid, I'll tell my edible <laughs> stories. Save, save it. Save it for the sponsorship. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a great thing just because of like the, the whole criminal aspect behind yes. the, the stigma that, you know, black men are put in prison for exorbitant amount of, amounts of time for marijuana, which is ridiculous and always has been. Yeah. Um, you decriminalize it. You take the violence away from it. Uh, you take the undue prison sentences away, crowded prisons, taking black fathers away from their kids. All of that stuff kind of like dissipates and the stigma starts to change uh, once it's legal. So I'm all for it. Um, I saw that uh, that story you put in there and I remember hearing something on the news the, uh, the other week where I think Oregon was decriminalizing all drugs. Yes, yes, heavy. I think- A little excessive, oh, slow down, okay. Oh, yeah. I think it's dope. And honestly, like if like heroin and cocaine and all that stuff like that, that fucks people up, there's, the reason that I don't do heroin isn't because it's not illegal. It's because it's heroin. 
That's the reason. Back. Like the reason I don't snort cocaine isn't because I'll go to jail. It's because it's snorting cocaine. Yeah. So I don't really, people who are conservatives think like this world is going to like drop into just like this, this anarchy and people are just like on the bus shooting needles up. And it's no. not going to be, and it's, it's not going to be that. No, it's not. There's not going to be a certain influx of people who's like, like you said, I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's not like, oh, it's legal now. Let me tap in. Like, nah, if you were doing this before, if there's something that you're, <laughs> huh? It's legal now. Let me shoot up. Nobody. Yeah, let me just shoot up. No one got instantly triggered. I think that um, the legalization of just cannabis for um, recreational use, I think that's dope because it's really just bringing an awareness of just cannabis and that it's not this illegal thing. You're not a negative person if you consume it, smoke it, use it to, for your, your aches and pains, use it for your memory, whatever the case may be. Like, it, there's just so much negatives attached to it, especially as an African-American who smokes weed. It's like people look at you like, oh, this guy's no good. And it's like, nah, this is a legal substance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> White people are making billions off of this. Yeah. I think it's okay. While we're Legally ma making billions of this. Trading between each other, stocks. Yeah. So it's like, there's no way you can say that this, is, make, this makes me or it makes the African-American who's behind bars because he had it on his possession a terrible person. It yeah. can't define us, you know? So I'm really happy that we're making it legal. Um, and I think that with, they were saying that with the start of like New Jersey, it's going to really start those Northeast states, that, that Pennsylvania, the Delawares, the, the Baltimores, the New Yorks. Like these are industries in which, one, we're providing more jobs. We're providing just stimulus to our economy like it's a great benefit it is you know so i think it's a great time shout out to cannabis for taking a big win on this year's election <laughs> Canada, that's crazy <laughs> um what you got the second topic that that really stuck out to me this week was this is a little different um but uh it's last week carl lentz the pastor of hillsong a church that i actually associate myself with um, came out and he, um, he actually got let go from his position as the head pastor at Hillsong, New York. Um, and then the following day, he released a statement of the reason why he was released. And that was because he cheated on his wife. And that is unfortunate. Um, it's an unfortunate mistake uh, that he made. But it, it's just one of those things that when you're in a position to lead millions and, and people are attached to you, like... The headlines say Justin Bieber's pastor is like, fam, he's not even Justin Bieber's pastor, but because he's associated with these people, like they put him in this position where multiple people now follow him and look to him. And now I just saw him cheat on his wife. And now the church doesn't even know what to do. I saw that countdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, like, cheating on never a good thing. Cheating in a relationship is never a good thing. It's a horrible thing. One of the worst things you can do. Horrible, horrible thing. Um, however, like in regular life, you don't lose your job because you cheated on your wife. Like you don't lose right. at the bus at, with the MTA or at, in HR because you cheated on your wife. And, yeah. um, and this is why, you know, people and religion is always really confusing because it's forgive, forgive, forgive. Um, you know, a church is a place for sinners. Um, mm -hmm. but then you fuck up and you're excommunicated or you're fired or you lose your job. See, so really giving the message that all are welcome. It's like, you're welcome if you are perfect. You're welcome if you've never made a mistake. You're welcome if, you know, when most people that are in church are, are looking for redemption and looking for some type of faith and encouragement, to go out there and live a good life. Um, you know, this is, I, I love this. I love this topic. I love what you just, we were just talking about because yeah, that's what the church harps on. Like, you know, like come in as you are, we accept everyone. And I think this is a very interesting situation that we have now because I do agree that he should be let go um, from his position as the head pastor. I, I do f feel like to be a pastor of a church, you need to live a life. And um, you know that calling going into it. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that you're, you're exempt from mistakes, but a mistake of this magnitude, um, it's a moral action. So it doesn't really make you fit to lead 
other people who struggle with the same thing, right? So I do agree with him being terminated, but like what I want to see is how the church responds to him. And I also want to see how he responds to this. Like, because if you lose your position and your title, do you not come to church anymore? I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's essentially what it is. And that's why it's- No, because that's, cause it's like- That's not what it should be, but that's what it's going to be. You don't go back fired from. You don't do that. I worked at a, I worked at a retail place. Don't work there anymore. I still shop, but I'm not going to go to the exact store I used to work at. You might. Everybody's like, hey, Trav, get to see you. You might. I'm not going to do that. No, it's too far. <laughs> too far. And it's just like a, it's like a shame thing. Like, even if you shouldn't feel ashamed, like, it's like a shame thing. And then if he goes back to church, he knows exactly what people are talking about. He knows exactly what people are questioning. But you got to kind of compass. And it's one thing if they look at him and they say, hey, listen, like you're in a position where people look up to you, man. And morally, you, you screwed up. You fucked up. Listen, like we're going to take away this position from you, but we're here for you. Like come, come as you are, come to church, like come to counseling, like you and your wife, if you want to work it out, come to counseling. We'll t I'll talk to you and we'll work this out. I guess from the senior pastor that, uh, that let him go. But that's not what right. it is. So that's why I'm not cool with it. If it was that, I'm cool with it. But that's not what it is. It's peace out, nigga, peace out. You cheated on your wife? No, it's not. It's, I don't think it's that. I get, I get your point on you don't show up to the job that you got let go of. But it's so different when it comes to church, right? Because, like, I think the ultimate test is based on church. The ultimate test is, like, you don't really run away from this. You kind of face it. You kind of embrace it. But, like, we know that that's not a perfect world. No. Is he being allowed to face it? Is he being allowed to embrace it? Is he being allowed to be imperfect? Is he being allowed to be vulnerable? That's the test. I don't think that he, is the test. I just think he got his walking papers and they said, we'll see you when we see you. That's it. Like, I, listen, I, if, it was, if it was what you said, if it was so, like, ideal, where they just looked at him and looked at his role and his position and thought, you are not morally fit to lead, cool, dope. Happens to coaches all the time. Happens to all kinds of people. Right. Who, that have to lead and have to like, you know, uh, be in a certain type of example. Shit, our president, horrible example of a man, like is not fit to lead. But nah. if that is a church and wants to live up to being Christ-like, um, I, 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 can't, I can't roll, I can't roll. I grew up in church, was in church every single Sunday as an adolescent and a teenager and have a great reverence for it. I believe in God. I, I, like, I love all of that. Right, right. People are imperfect and people- No, run that's fine. So what's your stance? You think that, what? You think that he shouldn't have been let go? Uh, I, I do think he should have been like stepped down from that role. Right. Uh, whatever like his, 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 his like really like front facing role was because like I said, either coach, priest, pastor, whatever, like you need to be an example to the people that you lead. And if you sure. If you fall short, then you don't need to be in that position. But if it's, if it's a church and you fall short, like we're supposed to lift each other up, right? Especially in church. No, absolutely. I, I, I think this is the biggest test. I agree with you. This, is the, this to me is a huge test on just the church, right? Like how do you accept someone when they make a mistake? It should be, it shouldn't be even like a question. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a question. It shouldn't be hard. But like, this is the test though. Like, like, do you, does the church actually practice what the church preaches? Oh no, absolutely. Right? I know. And, and we will, and we'll see. We, we shall see. I think another question I had for you was Christian wife, right? Uh-huh. Forgive your husband. Right. Take him back. If you trust them. I mean, listen, we can go. Life is life, right? Like we can go right. a certain set of rules or commandments or Bible verses, but ultimately you got to be able to look yourself in the mirror and be comfortable with the things you're doing every day. And if you right. meet somebody, you got to be comfortable that you trust that person to only be with you and be faithful. And if right. you divorce them. Yeah, that has to be traumatizing. I feel like as a, as a pastor's wife, you believe it's light. It's okay. It's cool. Like there's no chance. Well, they put better chance than most. They put their to get cheated on, huh? They put their faith over their pride. Yeah, 
about if you, it's not about if they feel good, it's about how's my family. It's about how's this church family. It's about how's my kids. It's about, you know, my yeah. still needs to be this pillar in the community. This is tough. I watched uh, the housewives of Potomac and you know, who watches it. So you know why I watch it. Um, and then yeah. yeah, wait, 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 carry that on before I came for your neck. <laughs> did. Absolutely. I mean, you know why it's on my television. You know why I'm watching it. Um, there is a, a lady on there. Her name is Giselle and her ex-husband is pastor Jamal Bryant. He's like a big time pastor in Atlanta and down South, but he has a bunch of outside kids. He's, you know, cheated on her multiple times and she decided to divorce him. And now they're together again, uh, trying to make it work, trying to make a new relationship work because, you know, she loves him and wants to be with him. But I feel like that decision to, to leave him the first time was because she felt like she couldn't trust him and felt like, you know, he betrayed her and their marriage and their union. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with leaving a nigga that. That's a fact. Regardless of their position, regardless if they're a priest or a pastor or whoever. Like, you got to live with yourself. Choose you first. Abs ab abs of fucking lootly. I think that's just where it's at. You choose, your, you choose yourself first and what works best for you. Mm -hmm. um, however that looks. Yeah, absolutely. You can't be sure how other people are, uh, are looking at it because, like I've said plenty of times, like, you got to live with yourself. You got to wake up and look at yourself in the morning and uh, be able to sleep easily knowing that you made the right choices for yourself. Right. So I just, you know, prayers out. To, I just... Really hope the church does what the church is supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? It won't. <laughs> Trevor, you have to be a little optimistic on the church. Though. It won't. It won't. The ch Listen, the church is a, is a business. And a business is run by people. And <laughs> You know what's so funny? People aren't perfect. When you say church is a business, Kim gives me the news. Uh -huh. You know what happened? And then like maybe like five minutes later, she's like, I did not know Carl was worth $2.5 million. And I'm like, it's a goddamn business. It's a business. Yeah, it's a business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. God is a business. It's a wild thing to, to really like think about in fact. It's, God is not a business. People have made God into a business. And God's people, not a business. Exactly. Boom, boom. All right. So we got two more stories, two current events. One thing we have to touch on. Uh, we're setting COVID records every single day, y'all. Great job out there wearing your masks. Um, so we're getting about 100,000 cases a day. Uh, of course, that's not... I don't think the mask work, to be honest. But So that's the headline. <laughs> the headline. No, like, people are still getting cases. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't tell me that all 100,000 people who got affected with this didn't have a mask on. I just don't agree with that. 95% of them probably didn't. And they probably didn't. And they were probably in a crowd, didn't social distance. Uh, ben Carson. Ben Carson got COVID. Uh, he was chilling out with the... Uh, uh, at Trump's election party. And uh, I think Mark Meadows, who's Trump's chief of staff, he had COVID. He was at the party. Now Ben Carson has COVID. The, the, last, the last black government guy to get COVID, Herman Cain, is now dead. Chris Christie had. Chris Christie is fat as fuck. So of course he almost died from it. And Trump gets it and comes out doing backflips and opening up his chest saying he's fucking Superman. Well, we knew that. Fuck Trump because you're not loyal to your friends and not giving him the same treatment you gave yourself. So fuck you. And yeah, nice. COVID is a real thing. Wear a fucking mask. Wear a mask. Uh, did you see, um, there was a college football game on, um, right before SNL on NBC. It was Clemson. Notre Dame versus Clemson. Yeah. And the people stormed the field after Notre Dame won. No win. in sight. Everybody on the field. Big win. No mingling. Big. It's a big That's win, big. right? It's a big win. Yo, why are you mad at the niggas? It's a big win. Super spreader event. That's what the fuck it is. Just wear it. Does everybody wear a mother fucking mask? It's you not want to have this con Let's have this conversation. Can when will we not be wearing a mask anymore? When, is it, when, when do you think it would be okay to not wear a mask? What needs to change for that for you? Uh, for me, I don't know, honestly. Right. No, right. right. That's what we need because people are catching COVID and it's not a pleasant thing. I don't know, man. Nothing means anything right now, dude. I don't have the answers. I don't. I don't know if we should wear a mask or not. The reason I say wear a mask is because I don't, I don't really feel like we should shut down shit. Like, I don't want shit to be shut down again. That is not fun. That's not fun for anyone. People lose money. People go crazy. So we have to have shit open, right? We have to have shit open. We have to be able to go places. How can we do that? Wear a mask. 
Okay, so you're just saying wear a mask for compliance sake and not really for. I just don't, I just, I, I have a very hard time with this. Why? Because you're in Florida. No, man. It's not, I was like this when I was in New York. It's not because of Florida. It's really just because I just don't. All right, cool. We're going to get into this a little bit later. NBA is back, right? We're not going to the bubble. So we're going to have games, right? How are we going to have games? Where, who, what's the seating going to be? Tell me. There shouldn't be people at sporting events right now. I'll give you that. There shouldn't. They shouldn't. In in the NFL, every other week somebody's catching COVID. Every other week, and they're not playing because of it. And then even the guy um, from Clemson, Trevor Lawrence, who caught uh, who caught COVID, he was on the sidelines. Like, oh yeah, nigga, you have COVID. <laughs> Yo, okay, okay. To that point too, when the Dodgers won the World Series, the third baseman had COVID on the day of. Do you know he took team pictures with the niggas after? Suspended for the year. It's he the World Series. Entire next season. I don't give a fuck. He should be <laughs> for the entire next season. That's not okay. This is. I don't know, man. And why this is a game? I don't understand why this is. I don't understand why it's political. I don't understand what's confusing about it. If you have COVID, stay the fuck home. Where? St- what? What? What country has no COVID right now? None. Everyone does. No, New Zealand had a day of no COVID. You remember that? Yes. I'm going there. <laughs> don't bring COVID. Don't take COVID there. I don't have COVID. Tested. Huh? Get tested. I'll get tested before I go. Avi. <laughs> Avi. And they're going to make me self quarantine for 14 days. I mean, you just tell them you are. You don't actually have to do it. Um, just wear a mask when you go places. That's the thing. Like, you don't have to quarantine if you just wear a mask. You can, I mean, you have to quarantine if you have COVID, but if you don't, just wear a mask. That's the only reason people have like these quarantine orders is because they know we're too fucking stupid to wear a motherfucking mask because we can't breathe. And it's my right. My rights are being infringed. Because- Trev, that is, who gave you this speech on mask? People say, people, Trump people say like, you're making me wear a mask. You're infringing on my First Amendment rights. Fuck you and your First Amendment rights. Wear a fucking mask. Fuck the First Amendment. Wear a mask. How about, please. no, not please. No, now. <laughs> no, now. Now, um, next uh, current event, Trump's inner circle are reportedly having talks with him about conceding. Uh, according to CM- CNN's Shyman, I am not pronouncing that last name, uh, the first lady has joined the growing chorus of President Trump's inner circle, advising him the time has come for him to accept the loss. Take your L, partner, and keep it moving. I feel like that's what good friends do. Good friends and family let you know when it's time to take your L and keep it moving. If you never took an L in life before, you really can't relate with niggas who be taking L's. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, <laughs> like sometimes I really get Trump, though, right? Like, he's never taken an L before. So you have to think from his perspective. He's like, t- y'all niggas know what loser. Huh? He's filed for bankruptcy like seven times. Not, not to him, they're not L's. Five marriages. One of his daughters hates him. Those are failures. He's very familiar not, with Not to that delusional man. <laughs> no, you're right. No chance. No chance. But yeah, I mean, take the L, but you know, I get him though. If I ain't never lose nothing before, you know I mean, I ain't losing now. <laughs> Yo, he is, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head. He's delusional. He's living in a, a fantasy land. Yes. Indeed. All right. So, um, we're going to get to our social slash relationship topic. And we touched on this a little bit in the last episode. Uh, I want to really, you know, dig into it and drive it. Drive it home this week. Drive it home, indeed. Um, the expectations of monogamy. And we got this from the Deadass Podcast. Uh, shout out to them. Uh, great topic, great discussion they had. We're going to have a better one. Um, what are your expectations of monogamy? Me and only me. Yes. Uh, at all times. You feel oh, me? That's what you were saying. I thought you were like acknowledging it was your time to talk. You no, were like, that's what monogamy means to me. <laughs> <laughs> me and only me at all times. Okay. Um, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, we, if we're doing this thing, right? Like, let's just call it what it is. If we're doing this thing, then let's do it for real, right? Like, let's just it be me and you. And that's what monogamy ne- means to me. It's just me and you. Yeah. Really simple as put. Like, no, like, Oh well, this person's for just for conversation, or this person is just for sexual stimulation, or this person is just to 
get to, to vet nine, nigga. Like it's one one stop shop, monogamy, one stop. But not everybody is a one stop shop. So once you agree to monogamy, yeah, the expect like they talked about like the expectations around sex uh, for monogamy. Like if a guy is expected to have sex with, listen, guys, this is just for like you know safety purposes. This is just a discussion between two guys. This has nothing to do with our personal situations. <laughs> Comedy style. Styles, indeed. Um, if you're a guy, right, and your expectations for sex are high, and you're with somebody who expects you to only be What's with- What's high? What's high? Let's, let's get into it. What's high? Um, I was having a conversation a few months ago, actually, with, uh, with one of my friends about how uh, this guy was divorcing his girlfriend, and one of the things that he, was, he wasn't pleased about was that they couldn't have sex every day. Every day? Every day. And that's something that he didn't feel like he was satisfied with in the marriage, in, within the monogamy. This is such a layered topic. Because as I thought of my first answer, I was uh-huh. like, um, every, every day is a lot, man. Is it? No, I'm just kidding. Every day <laughs> can, be considered, can be considered a lot. Um, but then, like I said, like, I don't even want to just like, touch on that. Like, is, if a woman is going to expect a man to only be with her, does yeah. she have to conform to satisfy him? See, I hate it sounding like a job, mm-hmm. right? Like I, like I hate it sounding like a chore. It's like, yo, if me and my man are going to be in a monogamous relationship, then I want to make sure that I that- satisfy all his sexual needs. Like that's what it, like that's how the, like I feel like that's how it should be presented. Not like, yo, like make sure you check off the checklist and make sure you give him sex every day. Cause it's like, then is it like, are we having intimacy or are we just fucking? Mm. Look at right? you, your vulnerable emotional bag. Oh man, I'm tapped into some really serious emotions lately. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really that's what like, that's what I mean. Like, are we going to do this thing when it comes to monogamy? Like, are we going to do this thing? Cause that it's like, it's like, yo, I want to make you happy. Like, yeah. Kim is my, is the only, is the, I'm going to be the only guy Kim's going to be with for the rest of her life. I want to make sure fam that I do what it takes to make sure that she's satisfied on every level. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't look anywhere else. And so it's not like a, I just want to make sure thing. Nah, like, but you know, I that- care. How is it possible for that for it to be that way 100% of the time? Like, cause I just like by nature, we're going to let each other down. Right. Of course. Of course. But communication is also key. Hey babe, not in the mood tonight. Kind of soft. Can't do it. Not kind of soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be a clip. Um, At a point. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, no, I feel you. Uh, I feel like when, when you're monogamous with somebody, it's, I don't want to say it's a lot of pressure, but it's a lot of responsibility because you have to do your best to be there for them, uh, as often as you can. And then in the times where you let them down in the times when you're let down, I think you really gotta, you know, call on your foundation, call on the time that you guys have together, your level of communication, um, and just like the benefit of the doubt, you know, and understanding that life is busy and not every, you know, second is a porno, like not every part of your relationship or every piece of sex that you have has to be like a, a presentation, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. understand and still understanding that you want to please each other and, and, and being a genuine thing, like you said, not being like a chore, like it's, it's 7 PM, t- drop your drawers. <laughs> it, it just... It's like, inti- like intimacy is the word for me. Intimacy that- is, a, is a hard thing for a lot of people. Yeah. When we've been so like hypersexualized from the point where we were like 12 years old. Early. Very. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting game. Um, I was, as, as you were talking, I was thinking about why are we even monogamous? Like why is that like a structure in place? Why do people... Property. Huh? Property. Property. property, Right? Yeah. That's like, that's, that's the thing that I heard way back in the day. It's like, uh, if you were a guy and you had land, you had land and you had slaves, you wanted to make sure that land and those slaves stayed in your family. 
So you right. saw one person and you knew you knew who all your, all your kids came from. Okay. And that one person stayed with you. So there was no confusion about, you know, land being passed down or slaves or money or anything like that being passed down. This is deep. This is deep. Cause yeah. I, cause if that's, if that's the basis of why, okay. right. It means a business just like church. It's a biz. Stop it. <laughs> oh, that's a bar. That's a bar. That's a bar. Um, no, then that means it's a business. And so then I like actually kind of want to like, for me, monogamy is dope. I like it. It's wavy. It works for me. So, right. But I also want to encourage in this 2020 era, like, yo, like explore what you want to explore because monogamy was something that was placed like over our lives as something that we needed to find. Right. Like, and we need it. If you don't need it, if you don't want it, don't tap into it. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people think they want it, but deep down to the core, they don't. They don't. They, they think they look at the idea of it and think it's something that's really cool or maybe it's yeah. something do or something their friends do and they want to try it out. But in actuality, they, they don't. It's not you. And that's okay. You don't have like, it's not for everybody. There's no way monogamy is for everyone. It's not. When you're ready for it, you're ready for it. If you're never ready for it, then you're never ready for it. But, you know, taking somebody like on a ride, on the monogamy ride. Yeah, don't take me on the monogamy ride just to. You know, just to take them on the ride. It's kind of fucked up. It's kind of yeah. pointless. Um, the next thing in it I wanted to ask is like with an agreement of monogamy, right? Like what are the expectations of compromise? Give me an example. So um, what are the expectations of like something as simple as like watching a movie or watching a TV show, like watching the show that you want to watch or watching the show that she wants to watch? Or are we going to take the time to watch a show that we both want to watch or going to a restaurant? Are we going to the restaurant that you like, that I like eat? Like all, I feel like all of that stuff is, 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 is comp is compromised in monogamy. And I never look at compromise as a bad word. Some people do. Yeah. Th the compromise in, um, in this context, like at first threw me off, but now I understand. Um, Kim and I are actually struggling with this right now. Kim likes to watch all the shows before I can watch the shows because I'm mostly playing video games. That is downright disgusting. How Bro, okay. Let me give you the back to back. Or I said that. Uh, no, I won't tell her. Let me just, but let me take, let me give you the back to back, right? Uh, Night one. She's like, yeah, I'm about to put on um, Barack Obama and LeBron James on the shop. I said, fam, I want to watch that too. Huh? She's like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like, all right, boom. Next day, and then I think it was like Lovecraft. She's like, yeah, I'm about to start Lovecraft. I'm like, fam, I also want to watch that too. So like, what are the expectations? Like, do we watch shows together? Do we not? Do we wait? Do I watch my shows? Do you watch your shows? No. Cause there are some shows that we'll watch together and some, and some shows not like, uh, uh, the boys, the boys on Amazon prime. Like we watch that together. I like the boys. The Kim, Bo Kim. I, you're, I love I it. Like the, I like the boys. Kim. That's the show that I can get Kim to sit down next to me and watch with me, but she's not really paying attention. She that's the compromise show. That's the compromise show. That's the compromise show. For sure. That's the compromise show for my shows that like you can both that you can tolerate that you can tolerate. There's some movies that I watch and I'm just like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be doing the rom-coms with her, though. I, I don't hate rom-coms. Rom-coms, it, it tickles me. I don't hate them. But as far as, and even, and even compromising is like, like TV shows, restaurants, food. Um, I, I just think the expectation of compromise has to be there if you're going to be monogamous, monogamous with somebody. And especially if you're going to make it work. Because like some people have arguments and they threaten, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Um, when in a monogamous relationship, if it's a person you plan on being with for a long time, guess what? You niggas is going to argue. And afterwards, just like just take either take your L or as guys, I mean, we should be used to taking L's right now. We guys take L's all the time. Can I tell you something about that? Uh-huh. Let's say we play 10 games. How many, how many wins we get on a, ten, on, a, on a 10 game? Home games too. 10 home games. How many wins do we get? one and a half right 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 why do we play all 10 games though like we gonna win them <laughs> you know what and we, <laughs> the reason we get that one win is because she fell asleep <laughs> that's it that's, the that's it it was an off night <laughs> i was tired long day you got load them. management literally load management <laughs> and then they double up and blow you out the next night <laughs> and then you get clapped because you think you're good you're not good nigga sit down about 40 the next night after you won by five. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bron, Bron and AD played the next game. Now what? You only won because she missed some free throws. Literally. Uh
Yeah. Speaking of NBA, uh, our oh look at that segue segment. Sports, sports, sports. Um, NBA back. Wait, hold on, hold on. As we touch on sports real quick, I just want to shout out my city, my second city. Hold on. Oh, now it's your city. You already know what it is, man. Vibes, indeed. L- L.A., L.A., my second city. Indeed. Um, champs, two times, Dodgers, Lakers, and basketball is back. Bad. Is Bond playing on Christmas? Absolutely, he is. Fuck no. That nigga said no. People talk tough. That's all that is. All that is tough talk. Niggas talk tough all the time. You know how many things I say I'm not going to do that I do? Come yo, on. Yo, I am the king of not doing anything. Well, no. Or saying I'm not doing Okay, put it on my calendar. All right. Yeah. Uh, club works. Exactly. Absolutely. Bronze playing. And listen, I don't think anybody should sit out. I feel like it is totally fine to have this turnaround. I feel like COVID is a thing that has affected everybody's life, the way everybody works, the way everybody plans. So you're no different. Plain and simple to me. That's it. It's, I, I think, I think um, the only thing that I would say is that timing, I think overall, the only people who are really affected by this is Bron and AD. And they're getting enough time off, right? They'll be fine. I, I, no excuses. Basketball's back. Let's talk about the positives of basketball back. Shout out to Brooklyn Nets doing a lot of things down in Brooklyn. They look to put together an all-star coaching staff. And Kyrie's going to fuck it all up. They think with all these greats that Kyrie will fuck them up in one practice? Practice plotting right now. <laughs> He's home in the lab. Just like, how can I play these mind games? Um, it's like, to me, my thing is like, okay, Kyrie is thinking of game plans of how to ruin practice. He's yeah. like, ah, today's mm-hmm. game plan. I ain't passing. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to walk. Oh, look, everybody's having a good time. Let me fuck that up. Yeah, I'm going to fuck it up. He's, How he's thinking. He's like, oh, KD's back. We can go two man. Nah. <laughs> nah. Um, so, yeah. I really hope it turns out well. Like, I, I fuck with Kyrie because he is that person that will speak his mind no matter what. Like, he, he is himself. He's cool. Apologetically. And I respect it. No, he cannot be influenced. He cannot be led. He cannot be coerced. I respect it. I love it. I just hope he cooperates and that team can be as good as they need because we need a winner in New York. New York needs a winner. Absolutely. And I hope... Because it ain't Rudy. Rudy Sorry. who? Well, Giuliani. He's just, he's just been all over my timeline. And I'm, fuck him. He is literally like... He is a clown. All he had to do... All he had to do was like just chill. Do your little speaking engagements for thousands of dollars. Save your money. You got your investments. I'm sure you got businesses. His cosign was more like a... All he had to do was sit back and chill. You were the mayor of the city after 9-11. You were heroic. You were, got national acclaim. All you had to do was chill. But no, you couldn't do that. You had to get up there, side with this clown in Washington. Oh, D. Now we hate you again. Yeah, he, you know what it was? He, we're talking about sports. My bad. Sorry. Let's take a second, because I have a lot of Rudy thoughts. Um, Chauncey Billups coaching with Ty, uh, with Ty Lue. I like that. I like that. Over in the Clippers, I like that a lot. Um, huh? It's a good trend that we're seeing. It's a cool trend. And also Larry Hughes, which I used to like Larry Hughes a lot in NBA Live. Solid. <laughs> good shooter. Um, so, but my thing is like, okay, cool. But Kawhi is still there and PG is still there. I don't think that. I don't think that combination works. That's what I'm saying. I think at midseason, if it's not working, they'll get rid of uh, Paul George. Yeah, he's 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 dispensable. You know, um, Warriors are Warriors a threat? Not against the Lakers. Yeah. Oof. And if that's uh, that's a good call, if Nikola Jokic could have like an MVP season, then not against the Nuggets either. Oh my God, Jamal Murray got some shit for Steph. Jamal Murray has, is in the lab right now. It, as we speak? Right. Across the Canadian border, literally. Yeah, yeah. Hesian niggas. Giving us, we, we only saw a, a small amount of what he's capable of in the bubble. Like, he's going to come out next season on fire. And I can't wait to watch it. I got three new favorite young boys. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. I got three new favorite young boys. 
Who's that? John Morant, Tyler Hero. And who was the guy we just mentioned just now? Oh, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. Those are my three. Those are my three favorite young boys. That's a good group. Solid. Yeah. And yeah. Like I said, the league is in good hands. Like next season is going to be dope. Um, of course, like I feel like. Wait, whoa, hold on. Draft. What about the draft? I haven't even been paying attention to who's uh, available in the draft. Or Jay- less of who's a, who's. A, I know like the handful of who's available. Whatever. Cool. A good a good little pool of guards. A couple good bigs. But when are they drafting? And when will they? If if the league if the season starts next month is in a few weeks. It has to be – niggas have to get drafted today in order to warm up for the first game in December. They're not going to have much time. Uh, the draft is on November 18th, and then the season starts a few okay. weeks after that. Listen, like I said, this is COVID time. Everybody's been affected. You've been affected. I've been affected. Nobody's, nobody's immune. <laughs> it's for everybody. It's everybody's going to have to adjust and, you know, adapt. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's, not, a, it's not a problem. Like, just do it. Okay. You compensated very well to adjust and adapt. Yeah, I don't feel bad for him. I feel bad for my damn self right now, honestly. <laughs> Listen, take care of home first. Right. Exactly. Um, and then the last thing I had was there was this, like, we were going to have, I guess, like, we were talking about UFC earlier. I saw this fight end uh, where welterweights Max Griffin and Ramirez, a name I'm not pronouncing, was called in the third round after referee Mark Smith noticed the state of Ramir, uh, Remiz's, his name, sorry, Remiz, Remiz's ear. His ear was flopping off of his face. Oh, that's just, I just seen it. Of lunch meat. You, there's not an amount of money you could pay me to get in the ring and, and, and fight like a person like that. You see, that video is like the most gruesome of the gruesome. I'd be watching all the highlights, like on the UFC um, page. Uh-huh. And, and you couldn't pay me to do less than that. Less. I think it's hard to watch sometimes too. There's so much blood. I'm not. It's very, yeah, it's 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 difficult. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of like broken bones, like compound fractures, and then like a like a guy's ears falling off. Nah, don't. Nah, uh, uh-uh. uh. Do not sign me up. I'm good. My ear hurts thinking about that. I'm. I mean, shit. You got an ear that that can hurt. Fact. His you know? ear is. And he lost that fight. That's the thing. Like, I'll I'll work. Maybe, you know, three or four months get ready for this fight. The thing, the last thing I'm thinking is that I'm going to leave here without an ear. Yeah. Last thing. I might think I might lose. I might get in. Might, I, might, I, might, I might tap. I might tap. About, but I'm leaving here with my ear. I got Both that. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. I know that. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah, that's tough. Oh, that was nasty. I just looked at that. That was nasty. Yeah, it was, it was super disgusting. Um, that's all I got. Oh, you didn't share your results. Oh, my results. Hold on, let me get my phone. <laughs> Trev. Breaking news, breaking, breaking, breaking social media news. All right. So I uh so there's a song by Anita Baker called I Apologize. And I famously reference this with my friends. This song came out, I think, in 1994. Or ninety-one. Was that the last time a woman publicly apologized? Last time a woman apologized. <laughs> I don't, I don't, so that's where my that's where my head went. Yeah, <laughs> that was the last time a woman apologized. So that's what I always point to. Um, and so the results. So I got what was the percentage? So seventy-nine percent of the people said women do apologize, and twenty percent of the people said they don't. Now, as we saw, how from- much? 21% said they don't. As we saw from the most recent election, the people who do vote the most are black women, women in general. So guess who responded the most to this question? Women, guess what they said? Of course they said they apologize. But the, vote, the votes I'm looking at are the vote from one homegirl that I got and another one, guess what they said? They said women don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> women who admitted that women don't apologize at all. It's and the thing, man, they don't want to give us their secrets. I got my mom voted on this. My mom said women do apologize. Mom, guess what? <laughs> you don't apologize. <laughs> Yo, I thought you were going to set your mom up to get clapped. Mom, guess what? 
That was a setup. Comedy style. Comedy styles. We're here all week. Um, but yeah, so we got uh, how many yeses? We got 15 yeses. We got four noes. We got two women that responded no. And then two of my homeboys that responded no. I'm, I'm aware of who their spouses are. And they don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Shade. No shade. I love them. They're amazing women. Um, and of course. Then women that just replied, yes, um, that women do apologize. Yeah, so those are the results. Hey, man, we knew what it was. 10 game, 10 game, ten, you have a 10 uh, game home, home, homestead. One and a half games. Look, just looking to get one. <laughs> won the game. She won the game on a goaltending call. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it really be like those random plays. Oh, look. You win the a game. flagrant foul, the ball back, and possession. Wow. And, yo, she shot it, got stuck in between the rim and the backboard. <laughs> and it was a tech. That's how we won. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Indeed. Good. That's the game. Good episode. Good to be back. Hey, man. And we back next week. Absolutely. Mondays, we record. We'll probably try to get it out Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, Great job, sir. We're going to put this together. You guys got video. You guys got audio. We back. Holla. Yeah. Shout out to our president. Shout out to Joe Biden. Shout out to Kamala. God bless our nation. Indeed. God bless America. God bless um, Joe Biden's uh, pill buffet. Daily. Yo. Which one is it going to be today? B12. The pink one. Is it the blue one? <laughs> His blue one. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Joey, man. Joe, indeed. All right, guys. For Josh, it's Trev. We out. Peace out. Thank you, guys. Hit the social. Peace. Share videos that you like. Share audio that you like. Share, share, share. Share it. Link in indeed. the bio. Peace. Peace.